Hi, welcome to this video. I'm Doug Berry, Battle Ready Coalition. We're gonna break down in this video the importance of having a solar powered battery station. Look around, see what's happening. The time we record this video, we're hearing talks of potential cyber attacks, the power grid possibly going down. Even in a storm, you can have your power go out and you can be out of power for days, weeks, or longer depending on the gravity and the seriousness of the storm. Having backup power through something as simple, and it is very simple as a solar powered battery station, is amazing. And it's also incredibly helpful. There's so many things that you can power with something like this. Before we go any further, I wanna encourage you to subscribe to this channel, share this information with others. This is important stuff to get out to people. And click the link in the description below and get yourself signed up for a free download, a free checklist of basic preparedness to get you, your home, your family, your loved ones on the right track. Let's take a look at some different versions that we have here. We got a 240 watt, a 1000 watt, a 1500 watt, and a 2200 watt. Now the idea behind these is that the amount of power based on your needs. Also based on your price point, what you can afford. But we also think about portability, maneuverability with the power station itself. Now some of these are easier to handle. Obviously a 240 watt power station, easy to pick up, throw in the car and bug out. But this is not gonna power some items, obviously like a refrigerator or power tools. You work your way up, you're gonna be able to handle that. But again, the weight of the item, the cost of the item, and what you need to power all must be taken into account. I do wanna say this though, and I'm very serious about this. Get started on this now. This takes some time to figure some of this out. Not a long time. A video like this will help a lot because it starts breaking it down for you and helps you start thinking about certain things maybe you hadn't thought about before. What's really important is to consider the pros and cons of having a gas powered generator as opposed to something like this, a solar powered battery station. Gas powered generators have their place. I'm not gonna badmouth them. They're very helpful in many circumstances, but they are noisy and you are limited by fuel. Now consider right now with gas prices going up and the talk of fuel restrictions and these types of things, that's something to take into serious consideration. If you're limited on fuel and you can't get to the fuel or there's some restriction on the fuel, obviously your gas powered generator is gonna be in a world of hurt. In any time of crisis, it's always good to keep a bit of a low profile. If you have a noisy generator and you've got people in the neighborhood looking for trouble, looking to steal or to loot, which happens in a crisis situation, they hear the generator, they know you've got a source of power. They also know you have a source of fuel and you might be the type of person then that has other items, food, water, and so forth. So keeping a low profile is a good idea. When you've got a solar powered backup battery station such as this, you've got that silent part covered. These are all good reasons, not to mention the portability. A gas powered generator, not so easy just to throw in the back of the car if you have to bug out and go to a secondary location. These much easier to handle. Now the smaller ones, obviously, this 240 watt, this particular one weighs about seven or eight pounds. Very easy to manage. This 1000 watt here only weighs about 22 pounds. Also very easy to manage. The 1500 watt is only 33 pounds. And this larger one at over 2000 watts is 62 pounds, just under 62 pounds. Obviously a little heavier, not so easy to manage, but much easier than a gas powered generator and still manageable. Now, when it comes to a solar powered one, yes, you're gonna to have to have solar panels. They can be recharged in a variety of other ways, depending on the availability of power. They can be charged off of a wall socket. They can be charged off of a car. Now, obviously that's gonna be a lot slower than if you're doing it off of a wall jack or with solar panels. Some of them, such as the Blue Eddy here, you can do multiple. You can do solar panels as well as an AC adapter. Now consider all the different items that you might need to charge up just to get through a day-to-day -day life. I like to look at filling the gaps, right? We got little gaps out there. I need a flashlight. Well, what do I use for that flashlight to power it? Well, got battery operated, but then I gotta keep extra batteries. That's fine if you wanna keep the extra batteries. But having rechargeable batteries, rechargeable flashlights, rechargeable lanterns, these types of items, very, very helpful. And if I wanna have that consistency of light, maybe it's a headlamp and I want a rechargeable headlamp. Maybe it's standard operating flashlight. I got a 500 lumen, I got a 250 lumen. I like these, Streamlight, great lights. I encourage you to click the link in the description to go check out those items there. Maybe I wanna recharge a smaller battery pack to take with me in some situation well, I can recharge all of these and more from walkie talkies to even power tools, rechargeable power tools, I can charge them off of these units. Now, some are gonna do better than others, obviously. 
And don't forget your phone to be able to recharge your cell phone because communications might not be down. You might need access to that cell phone depending upon, again, your circumstances. Power tools, also very important to consider. Some of these units, the larger ones in particular, will run power tools. That's an important thing to consider if you've got, again, a crisis situation where you need to rebuild, you need to fix something, and you have to have access to tools. Not to mention just having battery rechargeable tools as well. Another thing to consider is food preservation. Most of us are used to just going to the refrigerator or the freezer and getting our food from there. If a power outage hits and it lasts any length of time, you've got to be very concerned about losing all that food that you've got stored in the refrigerator or the freezer. Most people don't think much about canning or dehydrating food or smoking your meats in order to preserve them that way. Most people have no idea how to do any of that. Having access to a power unit to supply your refrigerator and your freezer can make a big difference. Not to mention, along with refrigerating your food, you may have medications that need to be refrigerated. Maybe you've got to run something like a CPAP machine or other medical equipment. Having backup power for these items is sometimes life and death situation. On a very cold night, if you don't have a fireplace, a wood-burning fireplace, and you don't have access to propane or natural gas to, to heat your house, you may need a backup power station just to run a small portable heater, just to take the chill off that air so you don't freeze at night, or for your children and your other loved ones. So remembering that backup power stations such as these, and there are many out there, remember, that have much larger capacity, and we'll do other videos in the future that break them down more in detail, a little bit deeper dive, you could say, into some of those. But just in general, understanding the need, even for life and death situation. Maybe you don't need to recharge your, your phone. Maybe it's not important to recharge a flashlight, although those could be very helpful. But is it important to power up your refrigerator, your freezer, for the sake of preserving food? Or again, medical equipment? Or running a small heater? Maybe even a coffee maker. These types of things can all run off of these units. Now, when you run heating units, that's gonna draw a lot more power, and we'll break that down again in future videos. But understand that taking the steps that are necessary to have that backup power so that you can preserve food, take care of medical equipment, take care of medications, recharge units, recharge or run power tools, these things can all make an enormous difference in whether or not you either survive a situation or you thrive in that situation. When it comes to even powering your entire home, the options are available. You can get a unit that allows you to power a portion of your home or your entire house, again, depending upon your price point and the size of your home. These, these options are there. It's important for us to investigate them, and I can't emphasize this enough. Do it now while you have time. We have the time and we have the availability of these units, they're out there, but that may be taken away from us and we don't wanna take this for granted, and we don't wanna let the grass grow under our feet and always be thinking, I got time, I can work on that in the future. The time's gonna come when that might not be the case. So in closing, I wanna remind you to click the link in the description below. Make sure you sign up for that free checklist, get that download, that simple list on preparedness, actionable steps that we can take and really get moving the right direction. And don't forget, subscribe to this channel and share this information with others. Remember, in the amount of time that we have, we want to let other people know. Give them the information that will help them be empowered so that they can provide power for themselves, for their loved ones, all those that God entrusted to their care. From these types of things to gardening, to water, to self-defense, shelter, many other items that we have on our BR Coalition YouTube channel. So please check this out and share this information with others.